Uh, welcome to another episode of Wakili Kwekon. Uh, Johnson is here as, uh, today. He's been very consistent with it. So, um, just to, to break off things, what's, what's your highlight of the week? Of the week? Yes. Um, it's just been a long week, yes. in a sense, because yeah. there was the uh, uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, but yesterday we came to work and yeah. were able to co put co uh, push quite a bit of backlog. Yes. So I'd say that's my highlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll start with a compliment. You have a very nice office. Well, thank you very much. You're very <laughs> really kind. And thank a nice you. piece of art as well. Uh, ah, yes. Yeah. Sante yeah. Sana. People want to know how to partition an office. Yes. There's a lot to learn. Maybe they should give you a visit. Oh, they should. They're welcome. Yeah. I'll yeah. charge just a small consultancy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My highlight? Mm. Yeah. I turned a year older yesterday. Oh, wow. Yes. Finally, you're that. I'm old now. It's, uh, I've gotten to an age where we, now we don't mention our ages mm, anymore. Yeah. But yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, I think we'll start where we always start. Yeah. I want to know about the, the, the young people. Yeah. Uh, the young one. Today we might not call you senior counsel. Yes. At least a, a junior question. Yes. Uh, tell us about your, your upbringing, uh, the lower years, primary school, yeah. high school. Yeah then campus. Okay, well, I also have to look for the young Judy. Um, <laughs> 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 who was that? How did she look like it so long ago? Yeah. But anyway, I was born in Moranga in a place called Kangema. Yeah. And went to a school called Kanyanyaini Primary School. You won't believe it. Last year, I can't remember what the CS education uh, Magoha was uh, discussing. Yeah. And he said, uh, I don't know, something like, uh, if you come from a place like Kanyanyaini Primary School, yeah. you know, he was dismissed. He was being dismissed. And I'm like, <laughs> how on earth does he talk about the school I went to? So that's why yeah. I went to school. Yeah. And uh, I was brought up by a single mother and uh, a family of three. And I'm um, the firstborn and I did my basic primary education in Kanyanyane Primary School where my mother was a teacher. Yeah. Thereafter for secondary school education, I went to Kahuhia Girls High School and I did uh, the same school. I attended the same school for my air levels. And then after that, I came to the University of Nairobi. After that, Kenya School of Law. Mm. And the, the rest, as they say, yeah. is mm. history. Mm. Yes. Now let me first say we <laughs> have a lot in common. Or do we? Not yeah. Kanyanyane Primary School. And, no, no, no. and <laughs> not Kahuhia. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, three so and being the first born. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, yes. Yeah. What a privilege. <laughs> 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 yes. So, um, one, of our, um, one of our guests, mm. I think the last guest we had, mm. um, they talked about the transition from uh, A-levels. You guys used to go to... National Service. Yes. yes. Did you experience that? I did. In fact, we were the first cohort oh. in the National oh. Service. Uh -huh. Yes. How, how, how was that? And might you know how that came around? Uh, it came around because at the time there were uh, riots like almost annually at the University of Nairobi. Yeah. So the president then and I guess a few other people that made decisions decided that uh, if they took us to the National Service and we got some basic training and some discipline training, yeah. we would be better students at uh, the university. So off we went. I mean, completely unscripted, completely unknown. Yeah. Uh, you know, we would get to Naivasha and uh, you will then take buses from there, mm -hmm. NYS buses, yeah. and you'll be taken to the camp. So we went, you know, we had just finished its form, so some of us were wearing high heels and stuff and stuff. Yeah. My good God, <laughs> shock on us. <laughs> We got into that bus and didn't come out like until after three months. Yeah. And never mind, it was it was it was basic camp, you mm -hmm. know. So we learned the drills, how to march, nini, all those things, discipline, stuff like that. Yeah. An interesting time. Yeah. I don't know whether it achieved what it was intended. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because I don't know whether we could have come out differently yeah. than we did. Yeah. But there you are, somebody who could make decisions was trying to do the best, I suppose, yeah. that they knew how to. Uh, yes, yes. I've, I've seen, like, I think NYS are being used uh, with the riots. Yeah, yes. in the Mandamanos. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is yes. it something you think you would have done? Uh, nah. <laughs> 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 no, 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 yeah. not at all, not at all. Yeah. I mean, not at all. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Maybe it had impact. I, I wouldn't know. I mm. mean, I, I didn't think I felt any different. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was the beginning for us, and after that, we came to the university. Yeah. And did what you did many years later. Yeah. Yeah. So, our guest, mm -hmm. the last guest you mentioned, mm -hmm. 
talked about how it impacted on him being a, a street club for rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. it's almost, um, and he conforms a lot to rules. Uh -huh. So I don't know if you felt the same having gone through NYS. It's a very good question. Um, I found it a bit difficult in some respects. Yeah. Uh, because uh, our space was completely curtailed yeah. almost to the extent of the space to think yeah. outside of the box. Yeah. There, I mean, there was a box, you fitted in there. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, I just found it almost cruel, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Because uh, look at it, you know, the, the very day, the very following day after you get there, yeah. you're given uniform, you're given a plate, a spoon and a cup and you're taught how to march to the dining and of course there's mismatch so <laughs> you yeah. knock one another you hit one another <coughs> yeah i don't know that that was horrible yeah and um i don't know if you did anything wrong even before you did anything wrong yeah you you were punished i mean like for me and, and a friend of mine um I, th I think i don't know i think the corporal because we slept in 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 barracks we called them barracks yes. yeah. not the big tents yeah and one night she thought she had us talk in the night. That was a problem. Yeah. So she asked that we should be punished you know, the following day. And the punishment was to wash a big tent. You know, there were like dooms because yeah. many people used to sleep in them from outside. You yeah. know? And at that point, we almost gave up and, and, and almost went home. You know, just feeling misunderstood. Yeah, uh, yeah so I used to find that tough. <laughs> I remember some of the insults, you know, as you are walking towards a certain direction and you forget to march yeah. because you think, you know, nobody can see you. Then yeah. somebody comes and says, Kujani hapa manugu haya. Unatebea kama mikebe. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. But you see, we're going to talk about it when we get there. You know, for me, I think that what makes a person a person, yeah. who they are, the value system and everything else, yes. is a primary socialization, yeah. you see. Yeah. So that, in a way, I think that I was formed, you know, by the time I got to the National Youth Service. Yeah. And that has a lot to do with my upbringing mm -hmm. uh, long before uh, the end of my teenage years, so to speak. Yeah. But we speak about it because I know you will talk about family, you know, which I do later on. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but I, I appreciate and I respect that people, of course, would have different experiences yeah. of different forums. Yeah. That was mine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So now, mm -hmm. you... Uh, let's let's talk about the period where you are done with uh, the University of Nairobi. Yes. Uh, you get to Kenya School of Law. Yes. How how is experience at that moment? Mm. Do you get nine Ps? Okay. Uh, were there nine Ps at that time? <laughs> how let's was it? Say, let's just say that I winged it. Uh, I passed. Yes. <laughs> but let's also say mm -hmm. that by the time I was done, yeah. I said this to myself: I will never voluntarily put myself in a place where I have to do <laughs> exams I and mean, that's <laughs> how rough I found it you yeah. know because you see it's, it's so it's so interesting because in your I guess primary school I did well stood out yeah um, high school did well stood out you come to university and you're not you're not sure yeah and you're going to make it you yeah. know how difficult it was yeah. yeah so and then of course the law school is quite defining so it was tough the exams were tough yeah. but we had i should say on the other side we had very serious comforts you know at the kenya school of law then you yeah. guys may not know it i hope somebody has told you yeah. if they haven't um we did our pupillage in town many of us yeah. and there was a bus available mm -hmm. at lunch time to take us back to school for lunch, yeah, lunch and the right. bus was available again at 4 30 to take us to school where we'd find tea waiting Ish. and, hey. and hey. Get well you know yeah uh, our beddings uh, washed oh. you know once a week i mean we lived in those times mm. and we are still not for sales mm. so it wasn't too long ago yeah. and we got an allowance you know <laughs> from the office yeah. there was order so there was comfort even as the exams and the academics you know were tough yeah, yeah we were well supported i can say that yeah yep and then uh, we come out yeah. uh, to work. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it was interesting too. Yeah. Mm. So having gone through that system, yeah. where I hear from our interviewers, yeah. our, our interviewees who went through the same system, there was some form of a mix between going to class and yeah. actually interning. Or yes. What we call privilege. Yes. Yes. <coughs> so yeah. There was a blend of something. Yes. Yes. Uh, now you go to school. Yeah. And you only interact uh, with actual briefs when yes. you are done with school. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think, how do you think that plays out? Okay, so uh, I think uh, we didn't even interact enough. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I first came to work, I used to wonder what on earth 
no, no. What on earth was that that I was reading yeah. Yeah. in school? Yeah. Bis so <coughs> completely removed from what I was required to do, yeah. you know, when I started work. Yes. So what can I say? That it needs, there needs to be more interaction. Yeah. And I'm happy here that uh, sometimes I have uh, students as young as, you know, in their first year of university, yeah. you know, when they come. And uh, I think that it makes it easier for them to understand what's going on at the university and the, at the Kenya School of Law. So going forward, um, if people could get opportunities to be in, uh, in, in, in places where they can learn the practical, it will make their life easier, yeah. but also they become better lawyers, if you like, in terms of the service to the people, yeah. other than just getting you know, uh, all, all nine passes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so here we have a KSL. Where do you go for your pupillage? Uh -huh. So I went to a law firm known as uh, Namisi and Company Advocates. Uh, so there was... Namisi? Yeah. Is it Helen's related dad. to... Yeah. Oh! Dad. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. Yeah. So he was a one-man law firm. Yeah. And he did uh, a lot of uh, criminal law. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that's what I learned in yeah. my formative years. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, uh, that's a very good point to leave that yes. answer. Yeah. Uh, because there's another viewer of ours yeah. who told us to ask you mm. um, how you found the transition from what you were trained mm -hmm. to, at some point I think you were a commercial lawyer. I was. Uh, and then after that, family law. Yes. Um, how, how do you keep morphing? Yes. Uh, how does that, what does that do to your business and your, your income and such, and how those decisions come up? Interesting. So you see, um, after that, I started working at the Attorney General's Chambers. Those days, before you even got admitted to the bar, yeah. you could be offered an opportunity to work at the AGs. So off I went, before you could be admitted. Yeah. Hey, you um, guys grew up in good times. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we are still here. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, you know, so I worked there for some time, but yeah. then I knew I didn't want to stay there long. Then we were in a department that was known as uh, the co commercial department. Mm -hmm. uh, did one international meeting. For me, it was very interesting. As a young lawyer, I'm going to get the guests. It was called Asian African Legal Consultative Committee. Mm -hmm. My work only was to go get the guests, you know, from inside the airport, you know, yeah. bring them to KICC or wherever they were going to, yeah. the, to the hotels. Anyway, I did that, and after that, I kind of felt flat. You know, I, I felt, no, no, I'm... I, I want to do something else. Yeah. So one day I walked into town and I got a job mm. at uh, Machina and Company Advocates. I mm. mean, just like that. Yeah. And I found so much correspondence that needed doing mm. and I was ready for the challenge. Mm. So I stayed at Machina's for some time, I think about two years. And after that, we were neighbors with Mudoga and Gaturu and, Mudoga Gaturu and Company Advocates. Yeah. So they came calling and said, we are interviewing, are you interested? And I was. So off I went. So I was doing civil law at uh, Mashiras for the most part. I must say that he was a very, very good trainer. Mm -hmm. You know, literally sitting at people's feet and learning. My first case in court, mm -hmm. an injunction I never will forget. Yeah. That I, I sat there and he told me, this is what you say, this is what you do, this is what you ask for, you know. Yeah. And so I went to court and I got the orders that we were seeking. I mean, you can imagine that for a young lawyer. Yeah. You know, so you get so motivated to learn. Yes. So he taught me a lot. And then I went to um, Mudoka Gatuluan Company Advocates, another learning pool, um, you know, a, 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 a home. A, by the way, that place was a home. Mm. Uh, so apart from uh, learning the tools, I mean, you know, how to deal with the trade, uh, civil law, uh, commercial law, uh, whatever it was, um, we also were in an environment where we shared or the partners the senior partners and the senior colleagues shared openly with us. So we had uh, breakfast meetings, we had monthly sorting out, you know, files. And during those meetings, we had breakfast. And, you know, when you're a young lawyer, you don't quite take breakfast for granted, do you? Yeah. Uh, we, had <laughs> 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 we had lunch weekly, yeah. I think. Yeah. And even on Saturdays when we came to work, yeah. um, you know, I think Lee Mudoga bought us lunch. So yeah. it, it was a nice place to work. It was so friendly so that I got married in 1994 and I was there. Yeah. And I think the entire law firm closed, you know, to come to my wedding. That's what it was. Oh, it was like ah, a family. Nice. It was awesome. Yeah. You know, again, lots of civil law, commercial law and what have you. Lots yeah. of experience. My convincing, I learned in that law firm uh, for nine months, I was doing convincing only. And then as um, home 
soon after my wedding on the 11th of June 1994. Uh, PK Karaoke of Dungu Jiroga and Coach, uh, former Attorney General, yeah. calls me, and we were in the same building, we were in Bruce House, yeah. and he says that he would like to talk to me about the possibility of uh, a job. So I say, fine. So I meet him at Intercontinental. Mm. And so he says, we want to offer you a job. <coughs> Sorry, I beg your pardon. Mm. And uh, are you interested? And I was, of course, I was so conflicted yeah. because that was my home. Yeah. You know, the law firm of the Agatha Company Advocates, yeah. I'd become comfortable. Uh, and I was remembering they came to my wedding, all of them. But anyway, I owed it to myself, yeah. you know, to move on. Yeah. So I got offered a job and off I went to Dungu Jaroga and Kwach and uh, also a lot of work, commercial litigation, name it, whatever it was. Um, there was opportunity to do that as well. And I enjoyed my time there and, you know, <coughs> had my children, my, my son actually, while I was there. Mm -hmm. And then Fida came calling. So my sisters, um, okay, uh, okay, my my senior sisters Nancy Baraza and uh, Martha Kome, you know, kept kept on telling me, Judy, you should come and work at FIDA. And at that point, because I was commercially litigating and quite happy and feeling this is where I want to be, this is when, yeah. <laughs> this is where I became a lawyer. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. And and at that point, let me tell you, I'll tell you about it in in a minute. Mm. So anyway, so they came calling and they used to tell me, you come, come to FIDA, we are looking for head of litigation, you can do it. Then I say, what will I be doing? You know, family law and stuff like that. No, I said, I quite like my commercial law. Yeah. But then one day, I actually agreed to go and meet uh, Nancy Baraza, Dr. Baraza, you know her. Yeah. So uh, we were at Hughes Building and she was parked outside, I'll not forget, her pujo outside Hughes Building. So I walked across. I was expecting my second baby and I sat with Nancy and Nancy said, Judy, you it to yourself, you know, try something else. You know, yeah. go, come, come, we're interviewing. Yeah. Why of litigation? I said, okay, I'll apply. So I applied, I went, did the interview, got the job. So at seven months of pregnancy, I joined the Federation of Women Lawyers, yeah. okay? Um, very interesting because I started from scratch. Yeah. Remember now I've been doing, you know, a commercial litigation at that point, a yeah. civil litigation, yeah. at a very high point, so to speak. I mm. think at that point I was the key litigator in the law firm, yeah. litigation lawyer in the law firm. Mm. Then I go back. Now I'm being told it's matrimonial matters, of course, you know, FIDA. Yeah. Yeah. It's family matters. Yes. And I haven't got a clue. I got no clue at all what to do so um after i came from court one day the first day and people are talking about cup 150 151 and now i'm um, this lawyer who doesn't want to look like she doesn't <laughs> know because she should she should know yeah so i went to back to mudogaturu they remained uh my mentors and my friends and i spoke to john mutungi he's uh, now a judge and i said to him i don't think i'm going to hack this yeah. and he asked me why he said i don't know where to start he said, you've learned enough of commercial law, it yeah. is time to learn something else. Yes. Go to the government printers, buy all the statutes you need, yeah. and read them, and challenge yourself anew. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. And in exactly six months, I knew. This is why I became a lawyer. Yeah. I dare say, yeah. this is why I was born. Yeah. And this is the place I want to be. Yeah. Because I finally understood that what I carried for free, with I, I don't feel the weight of the legal knowledge. Yeah. I didn't feel then, I think now I feel a bit, a bit with old age. <laughs> uh, but yet what I had in my head without more could make a difference between, uh, uh, between a person sleeping hungry and not. Yeah. Between a person having shelter over their head and not. Yeah. Between a child being educated and not being educated. I mean, it was, it was such a humbling experience yeah that because of you because of the legal aid services given at FIDA Kenya mm. a child could have hope of going to school yeah a child could have hope of having a meal in a day yeah a mother could have hope of providing a roof for her children yeah and we then were trained of course in FIDA and uh, national I mean uh, uh, non-governmental organizations there's a lot of training facilities uh, provided yeah. and one of the ones that has never left me was uh, managing for results, okay? So they would ask us in the legal aid clinic, would say, for example, today we saw 50 clients. And the person who's training us would ask us, so? Uh, then we'd say, so we filed some cases in court. Then they would ask us, so? And then they got maintenance, for example. And then, so? 
the children were able to go to school mm -hmm. and then so this is managing for results it's yeah. not enough mm -hmm. to see people it's not enough to even provide them yeah. with legal services access to justice means justice means that you're able to help transform people's lives to a better place mm -hmm. i mean that was uh, for me a turning point yeah. in my life yeah so of course I dealt with a lot of family law. By that time I'd become confident. I knew what the difference between Cap 150 <laughs> or 51 <laughs> and the others, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so I started to do it and I did it for quite a while. Yeah. Alongside uh, court work, there is also of course a lot of legal awareness that you get involved in. Yeah. Uh, there were open forums where I spoke to members of the public. That's when I actually now began to do um, the, 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 you know, if to even work with the media, I had never ever done anything with the media. Yeah. I remember my st first appearance at KBC and I was like, you know, <laughs> 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 am I going to hack this? Yeah. So, you know, a training crowd in many, many, many respects. Yeah. Um, but also beginning to understand that there's something you can change about this society yeah. if you put yeah. your mind to it, yeah. you see? Mm. And so some of those days I used to think, you know, because the violations that you come across in a legal aid clinic, you people will never have any idea about how bad it can get. Yeah. And I used to ask myself, so should we then separate men from women and just say men are there, you know, in one camp and men are in another. And mm. of course, you know that it's not possible yeah. that uh, God intended that mm. we would sit as we are sitting. Yeah. So that's when I began to seriously think about the institution called family yeah and i began to think that these children who now become adults and become either victims or become the perpetrators of violence if they were differently socialized they probably would have been different persons yeah i began to understand that the time we're talking to people stop being violent nini nini stop doing this and that it's a bit late yeah you know mm. because they have been socialized in a certain way, and that's what we talked about, yeah. even at the National Youth Service, yeah. that it's a bit late to change an adult, mm. but it's very possible to socialize a child differently, to respect other people, but also to seek to be uh, respected you know, by society. Yeah. So I was there for the longest time, I thought it was, and then it was time for me uh, to leave uh, FIDA, yeah and come out because of course it's intense it's very very intense mm -hmm. and i knew at the end of 2002 uh, you guys were born <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. that i needed to come out yes. and then remember we're also going through a political transition yeah. ah, so it was yeah. a bit uh, of a challenge and i know my family were concerned especially my husband he was saying is this the time to come out but i said to him I couldn't wait one moment, it's time for me to do something else. Yeah. So on the 1st of March 2020, 2002, three yes. now, uh -huh. and three, it was now after the elections, yeah. Quebec is coming and the government is just beginning to transition, yeah. okay? Mm. I was out and uh, I started uh, my own law firm. Yeah. And then uh, just the first week at work, mm -hmm. I get a call from uh, a lady uh, she told me she worked at the World Bank and uh, I said I've left FIDA she said that's why I'm looking for you mm -hmm. you know yeah I said okay let's have a meeting and I think we met at the Norfolk and she said to me that she had uh, a training um, she was here about talking to people about a training that's going to be held at the World Bank um, Washington on uh, legal aid and stuff, stuff, stuff. Yeah. And I said, but I've left Frida, and she said, that's why I'm looking for you, because I'm looking for a consultant, so to speak. Yeah. So off I went and did that, and it sort of jump-started, yeah. you know, <laughs> my law firm. Yeah. Because, of course, there was uh, earnings to be made. Yeah. And I'll tell you this on a lighter note. Yeah. They were offering me a very good ticket, yeah. uh, a business class, and I said, no, just now, yeah. I have a lot priorities how about I travel economy and yeah. I save some of the money they yeah. said yes in fact we are sending you the money yeah. so buy the economy <laughs> ticket <laughs> maybe I should have traveled business <laughs> class because <laughs> I was hoping I'll travel business class soon thereafter but I'm still struggling so maybe yeah. I should have traveled that <laughs> anyway <Yeah. no. laughs> anyway yeah. so then you know I, I came in and I didn't quite know whether I was going to have um, a family practice as I have today yes when you start so, a so law firm just mm -hmm. as you pr as you as 
as you come in, yeah. you would, are you have you already pigeonholed yourself to do family or are you just doing general practice at that time? General practice. Or I was general. open-minded. Okay. I came out uh, oh. with an open mind, oh, okay. you see. Yeah. But family found me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I came out open-minded. Whatever presents, it's business. You're starting. Yeah. You prepare yourself for everything. Yeah. But, you know, you know, family found me. Yeah. And so I started to do, you know, family, to, to continue with family law because of FIDA, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. was also mm -hmm. a lot about family law. And of course, I moved with quite a bit of the clients there mm -hmm. uh, on a pro bono basis yeah. because, of course, I needed to finalize uh, their, their cases. Yeah. So in 2003, remember the, we have a new government. Yeah. Rachel Omamo was then in practice, very solid in Jubilee House yeah. and with very many clients. I don't know that it was Jubilee mm -hmm. Exchange or something. Mm -hmm. So we had a matter, my first serious custody battle. Yeah. She was on the other side ah. uh, and I was on this other side. Yeah. At the end of it, and I can tell you it was a tough one, yeah. uh, Rachel said to me, you know, Judy, I think you take care of my clients. Mm -hmm. Do because she had been appointed ambassador mm -hmm. to France. Yeah, and I said okay, and she said, um, and I want to leave my clients with somebody who can take care of them. I yeah. said okay, and then she said, uh, but will you buy my law firm or the files? <laughs> yeah. I said no, I didn't have a red cent. Yeah. I said no, I don't have money. Mm. You know, but she said it. You know what? Mm. It's so important for me that my clients are taken care of. Yeah. that I'll give you for free. Mm. Can you imagine? That's what she did. And I know there were people who were willing to buy. Yeah. So, you know, you meet such incredible persons yeah. and mentors. Yeah. Yes. Because what else can she be? Yeah. You know, yeah. than a mentor. Yeah. So, yeah. So then she was asking, will you manage? You now you have a family, you have kids, you have a husband. Will you manage this? And I said, yes, I will manage. Yeah. So I went, took the files from her. And so my law firm started, this is March. Remember, I've just started about March. Yeah, yeah. March, April there. Yeah. So I started with uh, a full tray, yeah. you know, so to speak, or yeah. soon thereafter. Yeah. Um, because of a sister who went ahead of me and who did not give me uh, her business because I could pay for it, mm -hmm. but because she felt I could take care of her clients. So, so just, just, just so that I don't lose something yeah. on, uh, yeah. on that incredible journey, yeah. Yeah. You've, um, you had, uh, before you set up your practice, mm -hmm. you had done a number of, uh, you had worked at uh, a number of places. Yes. And uh, nowadays, uh, what, what we normally see is that a lot of people, uh, mm. you come out of uh, Kenya School of Law, you get admitted, yeah. and then you jump straight into, mm -hmm. the, into the, the, the practice of law. Yeah. Do you think having that foundation that you have, and of course, uh, that morphed into briefs from uh, the likes of Rachel Omamo and uh, the, the other lady who called you, do you think having such a solid, um, solid having worked before in other places gives you a better foundation as compared to just jumping straight into the fray 100 percent. yes 100 percent. you know there's so much that you observe yeah without knowing you yeah. store it in your mind how law firms are run how front offices are managed you know who you need in a law firm yeah that i picked up from the places that i had worked so that by the time i started i knew what I needed to have in place immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, clients observe things when they come in. So if they observe a system in place, they're not only likely to return, they're also likely to give you bigger business, but they also are likely to refer other people to you. But if you look like a fly by night kind of operation, yeah. I'm sorry. Nobody is going to invest with you. They'll come there for an agreement to be stamped and what have you. Mm -hmm. But they can tell. They can tell. They can tell. And most of the clients you get are experienced, more experienced yeah. in, in, in matters of uh, you know, management and stuff like that than yeah. we lawyers yes. ever will. Yeah. So it's, it's extremely important that you bring in something from an established office. I can't say that enough. Yeah. I can't. Okay. Yeah. Um... Let's talk about your role in national matters now. Yeah, yeah. And, and this goes to, I think you, you were very clinical in your battle for the third gender. Yes. Um, probably you can talk a little about it, yeah. but then touch on a lawyer's role yeah. or duty yeah. towards advancing national policy. And also, mm -hmm. so, so that because mm -hmm. there's something that uh, um, previously in this show, yeah. we've interviewed one of your sisters. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear you have a sister club. Yes. So maybe you can also talk about uh, the sister club. Okay. Yes. So interesting. So 
gender awareness wasn't something that I was born with, so to speak. And I knew you know, the difference between men and women, end of story. As for whether women were more pressed than men or did not have as great opportunities, I wasn't aware mm -hmm. until I went you know, to FIDA, you see. So we are part of this socialization, you know, so to speak, where things are done in a certain way. And so um, there was gender training as part of the training that you got in FIDA. And that's when I learned about stereotypes. And that's when I learned about the socialization that I have told you. Yeah. That you bring up children and you tell the boy, this is what boys do. And you tell the girl, this is what yeah. girls do. And that becomes the norm, mm. you see. So over time then, I began to understand uh, the stereotypes through which we see things, the lens through which we see things are based on you know, what we were brought up with and what we were taught by those who went before us, but who knew that, yeah. you see, as a way things were done. So um, I started also now doing gender sensitization, you know, to members of the public and, and, and what have you. And uh, eventually I started lobbying for the constitutional change. And I should say that I used to do that even when I was in FIDA. And so we made pre many presentations to Yashigai and his commission in many places on behalf of FIDA, I did, on what needed you know, to be changed in our laws. Yeah. So then come 2010, a fantastic constitution with such an awesome you know, moment for those of us who lived then, yeah. before you were born. Uh, <laughs> You know, <coughs> then uh, one day, one evening, we are minding our business, sitting down and listening to the news as we finish briefs for the day. And we hear that uh, some people have been nominated to the offices of the, I think it was the Auditor General. Yeah. It was the Attorney General. It was, uh, what was the other office? I forget now, DPP. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were like, uh, Anne Jogu, a friend of mine who worked at CRU, was the chair of CRU, and uh, Ongoya, Elisha Ongoya, yes. a litigation lawyer yeah. with whom we'd done a few cases. Yeah. So we called uh, each other that evening and we said, did we not just pass a new constitution? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so we felt that we had no choice than to go to court. Yeah. And so we filed the case. And so those positions came to know more. It was um, Honorable uh, Justice Musinga, yeah. who was then on duty in the courts. Yeah. And he gave some conservatory orders. The matter didn't go beyond that. Yeah. Then uh, we sit uh, a few months later, uh, Office of the Chief Justice uh, uh, interviews are taking place. Office of the Deputy Chief Justice, so far so good then the Supreme Court. And we are like, what happened to the not more than two thirds? Yeah. So again, we call each other and we asked each other, surely all that work will come to naught if we don't do anything. So off we go to court uh, the following day and uh, we get orders stopping the swearing and now that was a huge one. You know, yeah. we before we even left the court premises, yeah. you know, everybody was up and about. Yeah. In the end, uh, the matter did not succeed, but I think the lesson was learned yeah. that we were going to hold accountable institutions and the accountability was going to be on the constitution that Kenya struggled for. Yeah. So several other matters, a number of other matters that we did. So we, we didn't think that we had a choice uh, to be the watchdog to ensure that uh, that constitution became, uh, that life was breathed yeah. uh, into the constitution. Yeah. But then I used to tell people that uh, for me, I think lawyers should do their briefs in the morning, carry your file and go to court in the morning. But in the afternoon, you should be looking at what else it is that affects the environment in which you practice. Because you can only do so much in court if the lawmakers are not watched by anybody. Yeah. If the lawmakers are not given feedback, uh, if there is nobody watching what's happening out there, then uh, one day we'll have no space 
you know, to practice. Yeah. I actually used to think that, literally, that you go to court in the morning mm -hmm. and in the afternoon you're in workshops doing uh, other things at TC. Yeah. And then uh, we were struggling a lot uh, with family law in terms of statutes. We had the marriage act from God knows how before, before <laughs> even I <laughs> was born. <laughs> if yes. that's possible, before even yes. I was born, you know. Yeah. Not even married. Not even married. <laughs> even I was born. Yeah. And you can imagine how long ago that was. Yeah. And the Married Women's Property Act of England of 1882. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you believe that that's before I was born, even me. Yeah. And so um, we, uh, we started that uh, campaign. So here's the thing again, by the way. A, up to 2007, the law on matrimonial property was pretty certain, although it was based on judge-made law. Uh, in accordance with Section 17 of the Married Women's Property Act of England. Yeah. And it was almost certain that uh, financial and non-financial contribution counted for a lot. It was almost certain that joint property ownership amounted to equal beneficial interest. Yeah. And, you know, we were sitting pretty and we knew, you know, you need to do so. There was a marriage or there's a marriage. Properties acquired during the marriage. Contribution in this way and that way. Then in 2007, the Isharia case was determined mm. and the court said no you don't have a special statute and so uh, contribution has to be as between husband and wife has to be financial as is provided in general civil law yeah. because we don't have a special statute yes and we woke up well, like what do you mean yeah. you know <laughs> what what yes. do you mean and that's a five judge bench yeah. you know of the court of appeal yeah so we had to do something yeah so serious efforts started now to give us a uh, matrimonial property act. Yeah. And so I remember it was Professor Gidu Moigai was a consultant in one of the first drafts yeah. in 2007. And in the meantime, of course, uh, our cases on division of matrimonial property, we put them on the back burner yeah. because to show financial contribution was not going to be always possible. Yeah. So we went on you know, pushing for uh, the, the, the draft to become law, mm -hmm. and I became very, very personally involved. Yeah. Uh, we had United Women, you know, supporting us, providing the uh, funding necessary so that we could meet members of parliament, uh, Wananchi, whoever, and so that we could push uh, for, for, for the law, you know, yeah. to become law. And so that's how then in December of 2013, we got the Matrimonial Property Act. I remember it was about the period just or after Christmas, soon after Christmas, yeah. it was to take effect the following January. Yeah. That's one of uh, my key, you know, uh, positive moments yes. in uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. And the next thing we had in 2014, I think it was about March, we got the Marriage Act. And uh, I, for me, I felt... Finally. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we are somewhere. We are somewhere. Yeah. There is something called uh, Matrimonial Property Act of Kenya. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it defines contribution as being financial, non-financial. Uh, then there is the Marriage Act that, uh, that, that carries forth not just the statutory marriages, but also the customary marriages and provides you know, uh, for how they'll be dissolved and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, the defining moments. And I don't even know how I'm going with this. I think I have a lot to tell you, so forgive yeah. me. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, we are he we're here. <laughs> That's why we're here. Sorry, yes. yes. <laughs> so we thought it would become easier yes. to practice family law after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I've had many occasions and I've said the more things change, the, the more they remain the same. same. <laughs> <laughs> because even since 20 2013, yeah. uh, people are still being tasked to show financial contribution and that's all good. Uh, the challenge is that for many courts, the non-financial contribution still doesn't count you know, yeah. for much. Yes. Uh, despite the fact that we recognize how important it is uh, for the other pa the other forms of contribution in a family, other than just the financial contribution. Yeah. But we're going ahead. Uh, I guess room was not built in a day. Yeah. But this room is taking a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your sister club. Yes. Or the ladies. Yes. Yes. So. Um, hmm. I think that um, it's, it was accidental, but it happened because many of the senior female lawyers at the point yeah. 
were either members of FIDA uh, or worked at FIDA, yeah. you know, like we did. Yeah. And because of the many sessions that we had together, you know, the trainings and water view and challenges yeah. uh, that we identified with together, we became very well bonded. Yes. And uh, I think then there arose an intention and a desire and uh, to mentor, you know, the, the, the younger lawyers yes. in it. Yeah. Uh, I should have told you that one of the challenges we had to deal with uh, was uh, a case where there was an allegation. So somebody showed up at uh, the legal aid clinic and they said that they had been violated by a person who was high up, highly placed yeah. in government uh, of the government of that time. And uh, the question was, what do we do about it? So we wrote to the Commissioner of Police and everybody that we could. We got nowhere. And so we decided that we we're going to have a private prosecution. Yeah. So we initiated a private prosecution. There were very, very difficult times, those ones, I'll not tell you. Yeah. I'll not cheat you. So that uh, to survive that, yeah. we used to hold hands in the meeting room, in the boardroom, in FIDA as uh, the members of the secretariat and the board. And I remember that song, How Could I Forget It? Mm -hmm. Bind Us Together, Lord. Oh, you know? bind yes, us yes, to yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Bind us together, Lord, you know? Yeah. Because it was, there were difficult times. Yes. Were very, very difficult times. Yeah. But you, we pulled through. Yeah. What am I trying to say? That the difficulties of the time and the intention, intentionality uh, to, uh, um, how do I say, to mentor yes. younger lawyers, yeah. Uh, formed without us knowing a sort of a sister's club, yeah. you know, where we could identify each other, could support each other, and uh, yeah, so it it's, it's survives to this day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, you've mentioned yeah. uh, the more things change, the more they're going to say. Yes. And in the context of mm -hmm. family law, yeah. I think you don't know, you don't know what ruling or judgment will come out tomorrow. I think that we are always surprised by some of the yes. things. Yes. <laughs> some of the yes. that I mean. yeah. Have you found the area to be a true reflection of our society? It is. Mm. So what I now know, yeah. and I guess what I've known for some time, is that uh, the socialization of the judicial officer fully determines their perception of the facts and of the situation. Mm, you see? Yeah. So that if you grew up seeing your mother working hard, and she's probably the one who took you to school or contributed largely to who you are, yeah. then it's very easy to identify the non-financial contribution as a critical plank in a mm, family. Yeah, you okay, see? Yeah. If you grew up <coughs> as, as seeing your father who probably brought in the financial aspect that you identified more with, then it is very possible that you could say financial contribution, it is. Yeah. And let me tell you, you know some of the judgments that come out of courts, you can't believe it. <coughs> um, at the end of, uh, I think the beginning of 2021, there's a judgment that came out of the Court of Appeal. The subject were a number of properties that were jointly owned and jointly registered in the husband's and the wife's name. The High Court, Justice Musioka, had ordered that they being jointly registered, then there being a presumption under the Matrimonial Property Act that the joint owners are equal, have equal beneficial interests. Yeah. And that presumption having not been rebutted, then it followed that they should be divided equally between the parties. Yeah. And so the husband appealed to the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal, three judges sitting, said, that the wife, the husband is the one who contributed financially, yeah. and that uh, he had employed a driver and a help, who if, uh, the ones who used to go and shop, <laughs> meaning that the wife did almost <laughs> nothing. Yeah. She was doing her consultancies, yeah. and that although she lived in the matrimonial home, because they had parted company and divorced, yeah. should, take, should get 10% only of that matrimonial home, yeah. And of the other properties jointly registered, should get nothing. Mm -hmm. Property is jointly registered. registered. Yes. Wow. The more things change, the more they yeah. remain the same. So, uh, just to build up on what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, and, and of course I want you to talk to the non-lawyer yeah. who's going to watch this show. Yeah. 
and probably someone who is um who is doing his orals next mm -hmm. week because mm -hmm. i know they're in that phase now mm -hmm. what is the actual position okay. with 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 regards to the division of property mm -hmm. in the event mm -hmm. of um when it comes to that what is the official position now okay yes so i'll try and, to in, do and it not in, in legally so that so that the non-lawyer <laughs> yeah, can yes, understand i'll try and do it in three hours <laughs> we, just, just, give the we have hours, the time you know? yeah. yeah but here's the thing the matrimonial pa uh, act so the matrimonial property act yeah. provides that contribution will be financial or monetary yeah. and non-monetary it gives examples of non-monetary non contribution it talks about companionship it talks about child care it talks about uh, managing a domestic <coughs> home it talks about working in a family business and says etc mm -hmm. so there are many other aspects yeah. Yeah. and then the act talks about two categories of property one of them is matrimonial property and it says matrimonial property is the matrimonial home is household goods it is property that's jointly owned and it's acquired during the marriage that is matrimonial property yeah and then it provides that in the event of a dispute that property will be divided upon sorry upon dissolution of the marriage yeah okay yeah then it says that there is a presumption in respect of matrimonial property that if it is held in the name of one person it is held by that person in trust for the other person mm -hmm. but that presumption is rebuttable okay okay and what that means for the sake of the ones doing the orals <laughs> next week <laughs> yeah is that if you're the applicant all you need to show is that you are ma you are married you are now divorced this property was acquired during the marriage it's either the matrimonial home or it is jointly yeah. registered yeah. then now you can see it because the presumption has kicked in yeah. your favor yeah. it is a pawn many times is a buona yes or the former buona <laughs> saying otherwise yeah. to show yeah. that that presumption should not kick in yes and so he can provide evidence to the contrary yeah okay yeah. and then the court uh, will listen to him yeah. so that's matrimonial property and uh, then there is separate property any property that is not a matrimonial home that is not the household goods that's not jointly held and acquired during the marriage becomes separate property and separate property does not acquire this does not have the same protection that's afforded to matrimonial property yeah the law says that marriage does not give one a right to the separate property and what is separate property for example it is a property that you have acquired in your name and it doesn't become your matrimonial home yeah. you see yeah. it is property that you have inherited mm -hmm. it's property that you have been gifted even during the marriage yeah. it becomes separate property yeah. but the law says that the other spouse who is not the owner of that property will become entitled to a share of the separate property to the extent to the extent only of their contribution, contribution. Yeah. you see yeah. yes you cannot be with respect to the matrimonial property the law says you cannot be should not be evicted without a court order you know from it yeah it says that the property should not be alienated sold or charged without your consent yes. exactly yeah. so those are the kind of protections yeah. that are afforded mm. by the matrimonial property act yeah. in 3 hours yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> If you have a house in Nairobi, <laughs> another one in Nanyuki, another one in Mombasa, <laughs> and a holiday home in Dubai, <laughs> is that uh, your matrimony home? Absolutely. All so, of them? Yes, actually, the act says... Are you asking for yourself? The matrimony. <laughs> 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 I'm just yeah. When he talked about Dubai, I thought yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the matrimonial home yeah. or homes. Yes. Matrimonial home or, or homes. homes. Yeah. Is a place owned or utilized and it doesn't or leased mm -hmm. and utilized as a party's home. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can have several. Yeah. If if you use it like um, an Airbnb. Yeah. So that you know you only access it a few a few days or or maybe a month mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. And this is still a home. If is you're using it, it for passion, partially commercial. Uh, but have you used it as a matrimonial home? You like you your family like yes. for a month. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the I other guess nine months is being used by other guests. 
I guess uh, it depends on how convincing you are that it was a matrimonial home, yeah. a home used by the family yeah. for their residence. They don't have to be there permanently. And ah. the reason why the Act talks about home or homes yes. mm. is because you could have that home up country. You're not there all the time. Yeah. Your brothers and sisters could even visit while you're away, yeah. but it's still a home used by the family yeah. and their residence as a family residence. Yeah. Yeah. The discretion, <laughs> the discretion yeah. is entirely yeah. up to the point the person sitting as a judicial officer yeah. Yeah. to make a determination as to whether that was a matrimonial home or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. uh, I've just made an observation yeah. as uh, as you're coming in. Uh -huh. I observed that um, I could be wrong. Yes. If, if if I'm uh, if I'm wrong, you can correct me. Yeah. I observed that uh, your firm yeah. is predominantly female. Yes. Is was has that been uh, deliberate, or it just happened? Okay, um, that's an interesting one. Yeah, not intentional. Yes, I of all people am aware of the need to integrate. Yeah, to integrate um, both men and women. Yeah, uh, into the working space. Yeah, but uh, the people that apply uh, to practice or to work in my law firm ah. have been predominantly. Uh, female. Okay. I look forward to a day yeah. when we'll have more males identifying yeah. as family lawyers yeah. than we have now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, those those are the, the those are the more people that I get applying for jobs or even coming here. Yeah. you know, for pupillage or for attachment. But you did see some men, did you? I think I'm, I've complied almost complied with the two thirds. Two thirds. <laughs> <laughs> not, not more than two thirds. <laughs> not more than two thirds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the bank. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I was but interested with mm. a male lawyer in the practice. Yeah. And you were saying the same thing. Yeah. It's very hard to find a, a man. A man mm. who's interested in that male you know, practice. For some reason. Yeah. Either they, they tend to, to gravitate towards the other yeah. practice area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. And you know, it's emotional. Uh, in a family law, you have to be ready to deal with emotion. Yeah. So the way we've socialized our boys, the yeah. ones in this room excluded. Hey, of yeah. course. Is that <laughs> 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 they, they shouldn't look weak. Yeah. They shouldn't look like yeah. uh, they're about to cry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So unfortunately then uh, they lose out. Yeah. And I suppose clients also, also lose out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. yeah unfortunately. There's, a, there's a young lawyer mm. who's practicing in your area. Yeah. We just started a firm. So yeah. she asked me yeah. to ask you how you deal with billing uh -huh. in family matters. Okay. Because there's a client who walked in yeah. with, a, with a divorce issue. Yeah. And then in the evening they were back with the husband. <laughs> 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 has it also, has it ever has happened it ever to you? Happened. Yes, it does. In fact, we yeah. encourage it. We quite encourage it. Mm. Uh, we quite encourage it. Yes. You know, it's a joy yeah. when a family is reunited. Yeah. So for me, the attitude that I have towards and for clients is mm. we'll support you. Uh, if you want to go back, we will support you. Yeah. If your desire is to stay out, yeah. we'll support you wherever you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so they will pay for the services that have been given. Yeah. Yeah, don't penalize them for going back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> should actually almost yeah. give them free services. Yeah. It's a good thing when families reunite. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> let's talk about um, your senior counsel. Yes. Um, you are, and I'm, I could be wrong. Yeah. If I'm wrong, also correct me. Yeah. Yeah. You are the first person, mm. the first specialist, mm -hmm to be a senior counsel. Is, is that the truth? That, that I think would be the first specialist in family law? Yes. Yes, since that there are not many specialists. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so how, how did that journey, okay. how, yes. Okay, so, um, so I, I applied, mm -hmm. like I guess all of us did, yes. to be considered um, for admittance to the rank of yeah. senior counsel. Yeah. And, you know, I got it. I have no doubt in my mind that it's because of uh, family law that I have done, because that's all I have done. Yeah. You see, yeah. So I guess that's how it happened. And uh. maybe I didn't have much competition. There are not very many <laughs> 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 specialists. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But the, e, the one that uh, pleases me also quite a bit yeah. is an award I got in... Uh, you know, in the first days, yeah. uh, of first years, many years of family law, yeah. 
I felt that we in family law were struggling to mainstream it yeah. so that uh, people sent me clients uh, um, and they would almost be saying, Judy, me, I, I don't know, I can't deal with this client, you know, I've told her to call you, you yeah. know, I've told him to call you, yeah. I can't deal with this, it's, yeah. so, it's so emotional for me. Yeah. And so it took a while before family law was mainstreamed, it was almost like uh, something that you put to the side yeah. and deal with commercial matters, land matters and what have you, this was not important enough. Yeah. And so in every, for every opportunity that I had to speak, I you know, was telling people, no, it's critical, it's central, it's mainstream, you know, families are defining, very defining, it doesn't matter how commercially um, uh, achieved you are, yeah. in the end, your family person. Yeah. And the commerce, if you like, makes little sense to a person that's having serious inner struggles. Yeah. Okay, because their family has gone bad. Yeah. Chances are they will not even remember the positive bank balance yeah. they have in an account yeah. because they're having turmoil at a very, very personal space where only family touches. Okay. Yeah. So that's the struggle that we had. And then, you know, at some point then we had the family division. Uh, coming up and therefore the judges and the judiciary beginning to understand that family law needed also its own space. It wasn't just about you know commercial courts and land courts and what have you. Yeah. So that was exciting. So in 2013 when I was honored to be inducted and admitted to the role of owner as the first woman to do so, yeah. I was extremely excited because for me it showed me that finally people had recognized that family law was central in the practice and in um, access in and, and needed um, acknowledgement in the um, access to justice sector. You see, so, so it was very, 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 very exciting. Yeah, uh, seeing where uh, where we had come from. Yeah, and of course, uh, senior counsel also as uh, so, so you know very excited about it. Yeah. and everything else that uh, the law society has uh, has done yeah. to recognize uh, the work. Of, of, of some of us. I know there are many members out there who've done great things, yeah. but perhaps not being recognized. Yes. Um, how I wish it was possible to recognize every lawyer that has done a lot, because yeah. there are many lawyers that have done a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's actually a question we've asked before mm -hmm. in our shows. Mm -hmm. Like, for you to, for, like we've profiled all the yeah. senior lawyers, mm -hmm. and almost all of them, if not 99%, yeah. are caught going live. Yes. Yeah, so where does a transactional lawyer fit in that place? You're um, asking for yourself. Of course, of course. I'm asking for other people. I'm seeing yeah. by the time I'm, I'm mm. getting there, yeah. Yeah. there will be a category or there will be a, transaction. Uh, a mm. qualification for a transactional lawyer to yeah. enter in this space. Yeah. But there are great lawyers here who don't yeah. go to court, yeah. but mm. who have done very well. Like you. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Yes. Even the ones in the media, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I my guests, yeah, yeah. you know, this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all the mm. very, but, here, but here's the other thing, yeah. Yeah. you know, recognition uh, like the Law Society has done and others is not the only recognition that there is. Yeah. I think we need to see that there is the, there's a lot of space, yeah. you see. Um, granted that when you go to court, when you speak publicly, you know, people get to see you, get to associate you, get to, with, with certain things, you know, but the truth of the matter is that there is recognition, there is space everywhere. Yeah. Recognition by clients that they keep coming to you. Recognition by <laughs> clients that they give you good briefs, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that, that is important. By then that's where rubber meets the road. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You know, yes. yeah, 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 mm. yeah. So this is not the only recognition. It's only that it's 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 very visible. Yeah, mm. yeah so you get to see it. No, I wanted to ask. Uh, mm. um, 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 uh, I don't know if it's a personal <laughs> question. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, oh, who is the older Judy mm -hmm. when she's not practicing law, or does she do outside the whole sphere of of law? I'm Maybe for now her. you can talk about uh, your family if you're comfortable about it. I'm looking for her. <laughs> 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 and if she doesn't answer that question, yeah. then you should end uh, the entire question by answering a question uh, one of our viewers asked. Yeah. How is it a lawyer marrying a lawyer? Okay, good. 
Yeah. So first of all, I start with the lawyer, marrying a lawyer. Uh, it's almost oh, okay. Oh, I can oh, end oh, with that's that. A, that's one answer that just comes. And uh, no, it, it's okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Judy. <laughs> Judy, when I'm I'm not here, yeah. Oh, is a mother uh, to two young adults, is a wife uh, to colleague John Thongworthy. Yeah. His daughter to my mother at 83, needing a lot of support. Yeah, yeah. His sibling is uh, trying telephone farming, you know, here and there. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, sitting outside my house or another person's house with uh, uh, ready friends and being good is cooking and just being every sense a family person. This here, being a lawyer, is not all I am. It's just a little bit. Yeah of that yeah. which I am. And it's a good thing that you ask that question because uh, when we went to school, we were told, you know, go to school, get a good education, and you will be happy. Let alone in life, mm -hmm. you learn, actually, education is supposed to facilitate, and a good job is supposed to facilitate your life. Yeah. But because of the way we were brought up, it was almost that your life was supposed to facilitate work and the product of a good education. Yeah. So if I was talking to young lawyers, and I guess I am, I'll tell them, it's very important that you don't lose sight of who you are and what makes you happy. And if you have a life that is that you like, you are likely to become a successful professional. Yes, yeah. because then you have a life, work life, balance. Yeah. balance. Yeah. Otherwise you get burnt out. You know, very, very easily. Yeah. And I think that when you're a happy person, when you achieved or elsewhere, you infuse that into what you bring, you know, mm. to the table. Yeah. So it's very good on a Friday like now to be thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to meet my girlfriends, you yeah. know, stuff like that, stuff like that. Yeah. I can't imagine if all I had to do was to sit here until it's time to, to go home. Yeah. It's very important to have work-life balance. Yeah. Extremely important. So yeah. I married my colleague. Uh, how was it? I think it's the natural thing because the people you're exposed to yeah. are lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It should be, <laughs> it's, it's the most natural thing. Yeah. And is it easy? <coughs> I think it's easier because you don't need to explain a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he knows the kind of schedules I keep. I know the kind of schedules he keeps. Yeah. Uh, maybe I just need to say one word and he knows the list. Yeah. That's Ipsa and he knows the other yeah. ones. <laughs> <laughs> It's like guitar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess it, if it works, it does. If, if it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't. But it's, it's, it's no brainer, yeah. you know, so to speak. Yeah. But it's something that I need to speak about. Yeah. Uh, family law, when I introduce myself, I tell people mm -hmm. that I'm here. I'm a family lawyer by choice. Uh, because beyond that point of struggling and trying to determine at the beginning of uh, my, my law firm, whether I want to be a general practitioner, commercial practitioner, or family practitioner. Thereafter, I became intentional about family law. Yeah. From the recognition, and I know I keep going back to this, yes. that it is the most basic institution. And that when people ask, where did the rain start beating us in this country? I like to tell them, when we failed to recognize the part of the family in shaping the future of a nation. Yeah. So for me, I recognized that family is a fundamental unit of society and the basis of social order, yeah. Article 45 of the Constitution. Yeah. And that therefore, and, and that uh, conflict in a family is inevitable. And if it is inevitable, then we need to have people who can help people resolve or determine conflict so that people can get on with the, with the business of living their lives. Why, and I know I was just telling you that a minute ago, when you have family conflict, it is unlikely that you will do much else than dwell yeah. <coughs> with that fact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If things were not good with you and your mate in the morning mm -hmm. or your spouse in the morning, chances are, that when you come to the office, yeah. you're pushing <laughs> yeah. paper, yeah. isn't it? Yes. And so, if that conflict can be resolved, then the sooner we do it, the better, yeah. because everything else begins yeah. and ends there. Yeah. So for me then, I felt that I need to skill myself 
and hopefully interest other people. And that's why I'm so excited <coughs> when I see young people coming here and telling me that they want to be family lawyers. You know, I'm so excited because, you know, when we came out of school, nobody wanted to be a family lawyer. Yeah. Everybody wanted to become a commercial lawyer yeah. and, and make it big. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. But also, apart from the fact that it defines the kind of day that you have and the health of your day, yeah. And I usually tell these people, these two people in conferences, when we meet and I say to them, you know, the only thing that could have kept the people who didn't come to this conference, other than illness, is a challenge in the family. Because maybe a family member yeah. was not okay. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So that's how defining it is. But also, mm -hmm. that children, okay, the, all of us here, uh, as a result, we are who we are because of our upbringing. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Other than the DNA, the rest of it is socialization. Yeah. And I like to say, and I'm no psychologist or scientist, that your backbone is how you are brought up. Yeah. Your factory settings yeah. are made up of the values, the vices, and whatever traumatic events you experience when you are a young person. Now, many of us, even us when we're bringing up our children, we're not conscious that we're not bringing up children. We're bringing up Adults. adults. They are not going to be another school where they were going to be inducted into becoming adults. We were not conscious as moms of the time that beyond feeding, clothing, washing our children, we had the great responsibility of ensuring that these people become credible, great people to take this nation of ours forward. Yeah. Okay. Now we know better. So we should do better. Mothers and fathers should know yeah. that they have the primary responsibility of shaping this nation by the way they bring up their children. children. Yeah. And back in the day, uh, a woman once told me that, you know, I can't, Judy, I can't imagine how my children turned out so well yeah. because when I was bringing them up, I was so busy fighting with their father in court. I, could, I, d I had no time to bring them up. And I, s and, and I thought, what a waste of opportunity. What a waste of opportunity, you know. So because we know better, we should do better. better. Yeah. That we resolve conflict. That first of all, we can tell when there is conflict. We find a way of resolving conflict. We find a way of determining conflict so that we can leave families with the business of bringing up children. The children. Yes. And you must allow me to give you this one. And I say, talk about it everywhere I go. Please. That the world is made up of clusters of families. Yeah. And I'll demonstrate to you in a minute that the, the whole wide world, it looks like so big, the globe, you know what I mean, yeah. if you think about it. But you begin to break it down to continent Africa, country Kenya, uh, then you come down to the counties, from counties you go to sub-counties, from the sub-counties you go to wards, isn't it? Eh? Yeah. From the wards you go to villages or estates or whatever it is, from there where do you go to? Houses. And families. Yes. So the world is made up of clusters of families. families. Yeah. Whether it is uh, the, the, the kind of word we get yeah. is based on the, f on the families that populate yes. the earth. Yeah. You can't get better than that. Yeah. You can't get a better than that. That yeah. is what it is about. So for me, family is a fundamental unit of society and the basis of social order. And that's why I will be here for the remaining days of my life. Yeah. And uh, because I think we're coming to an end, I just need to also tell you yeah. that I'm also resolved to die empty. And that means that opportunities like this that you give me yeah. to share what I have yeah. with the younger people, please me to no end in the hope yeah. that it will make it easier for the younger lawyers yeah. and in the hope that they will not have to reinvent the wheel yeah. and have to go through very difficult paths to get where I have gotten. And in the hope too that they will stand on my shoulders and see further than I saw. Yeah. Yes. There is no better way of wrapping it. That is magnificent. Yeah. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you. Okay. Quick one, Wakili. Yes. Okay.